So it's Seller Central. This is the platform where you do everything. This is where everything happens, where the magic happens, for lack of a better term. Now, remember, Seller Central is just a communications tool for Amazon.com. So the things you do on Seller Central take forever to do. Now, we're going to actually input our listing, our created listing, into Seller Central. But before we do, it's worth it to talk about creating your own brand and a GTIN exemption. Now, when you're creating your product on amazon.com, it's gonna go into inventory and manage inventory. Your screen might look slightly different. I have a little green bar at the top. So your screen might look a little bit different. And when you go into manage inventory, you create a product, you can pick generic as the brand. Like the brand is just a generic, item that you have bought on Alibaba. This is the easiest, by far the easiest way to sell on Amazon. And if you're getting your feet wet, you're trying out Amazon, you wanna see if it's right for you and you like what it entails, then yes, generic would be a great way to test out your item. However, some people would like to make their own brand. They don't necessarily wanna register with the United States Patent and Trademark Office which costs at a minimum of $1,000. They just want to create their own brand out of thin air. Now, how do you do that? You can actually do that with Amazon. You don't have to register your brand to do this. You don't have to register it with the United States Patent and Trademark Office. You can just register it for use on Amazon only. Now, if you want to protect your brand, if you want to start selling your brand, like you want to make, uh, you know, like let's say I want to make Alex's fun toys for nighttime i don't know and i sell baseballs and bats and stuff and i really want to take this brand to the next level and i want to sell to brick and mortar store baseball stores or something and if i want to do that and i'm not protected i run the risk of having someone else another seller just copying my brand outright and i lose all of that momentum i can tell you from personal experience that i have a client that is worldwide a multi-million dollar company but their brand got trademarked in Trinidad and Tobago. And in Trinidad, Trinidad and Tobago, you have this brand, the same exact brand name as them, same logo, same everything, but it's an actual different owner, which is really, really strange. But it happens if you are not protected. So if you want to take the next steps and make your own brand just on Amazon, I can go ahead and show you. You can go ahead and follow me, follow along with what I'm doing. Okay, so you want to click on help. Help is probably the best place for you to um, get help when you know what you're doing. When you don't know what you're doing, help is probably the worst place for you to go. But I go to help and I go to the bottom. I, I click here, search help. And I want to say, I want to, um, I want to type in requests to use my brand name. And then this little thing is going to appear on the right hand side. And here you should be able to see Amazon brand name policy. Okay, does this have, yeah, this is it, this is perfect. Okay, so when you're creating, this is gonna be in the next section, but when you're creating your item, you might get an error if you try to use your brand name. This is the way for you to overcome that. Now this error message is 5664. The error message that we want is 5665. Look at what it says. Request approval for your brand. The brand name you have entered has not been approved by Amazon. Request approval by submitting an application for your brand for review. If approved, you will be able to use this brand name in your product listings. So the error code is 5665. Now there's two ways for you to ap apply for this brand name. You can either open a case with Amazon and mention error code 5665, or you can try creating this, this product out of from scratch and use your brand name and if it gets accepted, but they haven't really accepted it, you're going to have some problems with the catalog. So if I were you, I would open a case and mention error code 5665. How do you do that? Well, oh, this is a GTIN. Um, we're going to do that next, actually. We're not going to do that now. So uh, let's open another tab. Go to Seller Central. I, I want to do a brand name approval. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click help once again. Help, you know, you go to, there's a lot of things that are on the help page, which is great. Scroll to the bottom, click on get support, click selling on Amazon. And here you simply describe your issue, but there's something really specific that you gotta do, okay? So here I'm gonna mention error code 
five, six, six, five. I'm trying to be as short, as sweet as possible. I know for a fact who these employees are and they don't speak English. They're from Europe, they, they work for cheap and that's why Amazon has hired them. Amazon will hire anybody. Error code five, six, six, five. I would like to approve use of my brand name. Although my face is in the way. Uh, use of my brand name, um, Alex's Fun Shop. Okay. Alex's Fun Shop. That's it. Okay. So I'm going to click continue. Okay. Uh, my issue is not listed. Your issue is normally not listed. So you always pick my issue is not listed. Otherwise, you're going to be handled by a computer. A computer is going to try to tell you the answer. And the computer usually never has the answer for you. And then here, you're actually going to pick what, what this product is, what this problem is related to, because they're going to send you to that department. And in this case, it's a product listing question because you want to use your brand name on the listing. Press continue. You never have an identifier, never have an identifier. Always click, I don't have an identifier. Otherwise, Amazon will not let you speak to a person. Press continue. And then here, they're gonna give you the option of speaking on the phone or speaking through email. I always recommend email, never on the phone. On the phone, the person never understands you and they're just writing down things anyway to send to an email to someone else. So always pick email. And with email, you can add attachments. This is really important. You have to send real life pictures, like what I mean real life is like camera, like camera phone, not, not professional, not digital, real life pictures of you taking it with a phone where your brand name, the brand name that you want to use is actually placed on the product, like created with the product. The technical term is affixed, affixed on the product. So it's just like painted on, right? The brand name is just with the design. You made your product with a brand name. As long as they can see a brand name, your brand name, the one that you want to submit on the actual product live, then they will approve you. They'll send you a message saying that your brand name use has been approved, but it has to already be on your product. Or, you know, you could give it to a graphic designer and have them Photoshop it and see if that works. I doubt it, but it has to already be on your product. So you already have to be speaking with your manufacturer. Maybe it's a good idea to have it printed on the sample. And when the sample gets sent to your house, so you can see if it's good quality, then you already have a product with your brand name on it. All you have got to do is take a picture of it and send it to Amazon. So you can improve the use of your brand name. The first thing you need to do is approve your brand name. Once Amazon responds to you, I'm going to show you where you would see that. Um, click on case log. I'm going to click on help again, just so you know how I got there. Help. And then here it's case log. Okay. And with case log, you're able to see all the times that you contacted Amazon. Um, this is somebody else's account. They contacted them like in February or something. You're able to see every single instance where you have count contacted Amazon and you might see more than you will, you will see when you contacted Amazon for your brand approval request. It'll say today's date on there and you can click on view to see if Amazon has responded or not. Or you can actually look here, status says answered. That means Amazon already answered. So I don't really have to click here. I just know that they answered my problem. So I click on view and I see what the, what the answer is. It might be a bad answer and I just have to ask again. So this is how you approve your brand. This is the first part. If you would like to approve a brand, but not register it with the United States, which is sort of dangerous, then you can take this route and register your brand name with Amazon. This is called not going through brand registry. Brand registry is something else that, that you can ask us about or whatever, but I'm not talking about brand registry. This is the use of your brand name and this does not involve brand registry. Okay, so you've approved your brand and you can use your brand name in creating your listing, which is gonna be in the next section. Now we're gonna talk about a GTIN exception. A GTIN is a global trade item number. I had no idea what that meant until like five minutes ago. But a GTIN is like a UPC code. I'm going to teach you how to get UPC codes and we're going to learn all about UPC codes. But a UPC code is basically, this is, I don't know, I'm drinking this. This is a strawberry kiwi item. And there's a, there's a UPC code right there. Yeah, you can see it right here. Yeah. 
Every single, a Coke has a UPC, a shampoo bottle has a UPC, everything has a UPC. Now, does your product have to have a UPC? No. If you're going to be exclusively an Amazon seller, just Amazon, then you can request what's called a GTIN exemption. However, if you're willing, if you want to take your brand to the next level, you want to sell to brick and mortar shops, you're going to have the support of your, I don't know, bunch of brick and mortar shops in your state or in your island or your country or whatever, then you can go ahead and affix the UPC code on your actual product. So you have a permanent UPC code, but you can get what's known as a GTIN exception. And the GTIN exception is more for like, sometimes there's like coffee bags. And I've done this before too. There's coffee bags that they just sell you a bag of coffee with no UPC code on it. And in that instance, you would have to apply an Amazon code on it, which I will show you how to do that as well. Uh, usually your supplier affixes your product ID labels, but if you request a GTI in an exception, then your, your supplier still affixes the product ID label, but um, it's just going to be the product ID label, not the UPC. The UPC is just it's not going to be for anything. You're not going to require UPC at all, as long as you get a GTI and exception. How do you get that GTI and exception? Well, go to help. <laughs> you do everything in help. And then here, I like to put under a search help, um, I want to list a product with no UPC. Let's see what comes up. More results. How to list products that do not have a UPC. Uh -huh. Okay, this is the article before you request a GTN exemption. How to request a GTN exception. You can apply for a GTN exception here. Okay. And this is gonna, oh, I have a pop-up blocker turned on. Okay, here we go. Okay, here it is. H apply for a GTN exception. Now, the first thing that you wanna do is look for the product category. What is your product category? Now, this is something that we go through when we're, when we're trying to list a product, we're trying to find our competitor's product. Actually, I'll show you, I'm gonna show you twice, but I'll show you how to find the, the category. If you're selling something, but you don't wanna have a UPC on it, but you need to find the product category, you gotta find a competitor. So I'm gonna put dog bed and I'm gonna click on a popular one, 33,000, this is fine. And here. This is in Spanish, so I'm gonna have to translate this. So uh, here, so here it's number four. There's the um, the original category, which is the cover for cover bed for dogs, and then the bottom one is dog beds. So there's a subcategory and a main category. In the main category, oh no, here's the main category: animals, just animals, 211. And then they have here dog beds. It's number four. So we want to look for the, the subcategory, but we also want to make sure that the main category is selected. Here's products for animals. I wonder if I can find that here. Okay. Um, probably pets. Yeah, pet supplies. Yeah, I'm going to do pet supplies. I think it's pet supplies. If it's not pet supplies, that's okay. You can always ask for another GTN exemption. Now you put pet supplies, you gotta put the category. This is really important because when you're creating your product, you're gonna put the base category, which in my case is pet supplies, but you're gonna put the pay, the base category and then you're gonna request a GTIN exemption because when you have a GTIN exception, Amazon will automatically not request an ASIN. They won't, they won't be like, oh, you don't need to put a UPC. You need to put an ASIN. You can just put in the product name or whatever, and that's it. Boom, ready to go. You just have to affix the product ID labels. You have to attach those. It's like a sticker. And you don't do that. Your supplier does. So it might be worth it to you to get a GTIN exemption unless you want to go the next level with your brand. And then here, you're going to put your brand, the brand that you had approved. Remember, this is why I went through the brand approval process first because you have to approve your brand first. You have to have Amazon approve the use of the brand name that you thought of first, and then you write the brand name there. Amazon has to already have approved your brand. And once they approve your brand, you can put in your base category there, you can put in your brand name there and check for, for eligibility. Now, this is not a thing where you have to have make a certain amount of money. It's just that if your brand has a lot of infractions, then they won't let you create one. They'll let anybody create one. Anybody can create a GTN exemption. It's very easy. It's just hard when you when your brand 
has illegal things in it, right? And so Amazon has blacklisted you. That's the only reason why check for eligibility is there. It's it's only for the bad apples. But normally, like 90% of the time, you can press that yellow button and you'll get your GTI and exemption and you don't have to get a UPC code. But Maybe you do want to get a UPC code. Maybe you do want to practice with UPC codes. Hey, everyone has a UPC code. You might as well get one too, right? So if you want to get a UPC code, follow along with me in the next uh, section, the next series to get a UPC code. But for this instance, we do not need a UPC code because we applied for a GTIN exemption.